you have old VHS tapes still laying around, let's make a journal. Hey, it's Tara. Welcome to My Ticket to Lake. In an upcoming video, or a recently posted video, I've been talking about my basement purge. I long ago purged all of my VHS tapes, except for my favorite. Well, the plastic boxes that these came in were not in the best shape. I donated the videos to St. Vincent's because maybe some people still are watching VHS tapes. I don't have a player. I don't want to get a player. I don't need the, the videos. This particular one is a collector's item because it's a limited edition, fully restored. But there's about a thousand of them on eBay that are just sitting there that no one's buying. So I'm tired of storing it. I'm tired of worrying about it. So I donate the video in the plastic boxes and just kept the covers because they're meant to be journals they have a spine it just doesn't get any easier or better than this so today i'm making my first one this one will be a maleficent journal not necessarily sleeping beauty but maleficent for sure and maybe flora fauna and meriwether will be included because they fascinated me when i was a kid not sure what i'm going to do with the wizard of oz one obviously a wizard of oz theme but I'm not, I don't have any ideas. Maybe, maybe I can focus on if I only had a brain. Uh, I spent the day out yesterday. And if you're interested in finding out how that went, go over to the Krabby Crafter Clubhouse because I'm going to do some grumpy glue booking <laughs> and talk about my day. And the mantra is, how do you get through a day without a helmet, people? Oh my God. That's why I only leave the house once a month. So that might be a funny one. I don't know. We'll see. Today, we're doing one of my favorites, of course. This is one of my favorite movies. Mom took me to it, see it in the theater, and she always read me the book. 101 Dalmatians was actually a novel. I have a copy of the original paperback novel. So fun. I'll show you what I'm starting with, and we're just going to work through the process. This is, again, going to be a longer video. Grab a cup of something yummy, and we're just going to do this in real time. We are going to have fun with beautiful things. I have these wonderful fat quarters that I needed from Walmart two years ago, probably. Never did anything with them, but I have them. So you, those are going to be part of this. I'm using a piece of mailer from my YouTube hashtag harvested mag swap friend, Jean Bainey. She mailed me this lovely little guy, although I'm feeling guilty that he'll be sort of buried but they like to hide so he's just going to be a surprise in case anyone ever takes the journal apart i made a kit i will show you that later in the video you know i made a digital kit you know i did i had to i gathered up some black paper that i have in my stash i'd like to get some more that's why i made a kit usually when i make a kit it's because i don't have exactly what i want and i don't want to go to amazon and just spend a whole bunch of money so i just make it on canva and print it that to me is the most cost effective way to get where i want when i want now <laughs> so i only had i don't know a few a few pages maybe four i think it is of the black some nice bright bright white because it's bright white the white that is here the dalmatians are bright uh, i said i'll show you the kit in a little while i made a kit that i can share and i made a kit just for me and i will show you both of those i also pulled these out of my stash some sparkly and some organza it's shiny but not sparkly black and these black and clear i don't know if i'll use them I'm not sure I kind of know where I want to go with this, but I'm going to kind of wing it. I have already cut this piece of plastic. This, I might as well put them up this way. This is going to be the, a sort of reinforcement for this paper cover. Then I'm also going to cover it with the material in order to make this fairly flimsy piece of paper into a decent, fairly sturdy cover. So that's what the material in the plastic is for, and that's where we're going to start. So I'll move my paper pages and papers out of the way. 
I also cut this extra piece for the spine because that's in important to have a super sturdy spine. I want to keep this as intact as possible. I want it to look just like this. So I'm not going to poke through here. It's going to be a hidden spine, which means I'm going to have to build a spine, which I would, no matter how I decided to do this, I would build a spine out of just cardboard that I have lying around. We'll get to the material here in a little bit. I am completely out of Fabri-Tac glue because I let it sit out and it all leaked out and I haven't I haven't replenished it. But isn't this cool? This is Fabri-Tac glue. <laughs> I just love this thing. It's kind of, it almost feels like it's squishy, but it's not. It's pretty hard. So I don't have any Fabri-Tac glue. So I'm going to use Art Glitter Glue. I'm going to use Scotch Create Glue, my tape runner gun for this. At least I think I'm going to use Scotch Create. I just had it, but you've seen what my room looks like. Imagine that. I can't find the Scotch Create glue. Oh, I know it was empty and I threw it into the closet in a little tiny bit of a hissy fit. I went to use it and it was empty and I just chucked it. So who knows if I'll ever see it again. I've been doing a few videos about how to calm the mental chaos and feel like you're in control and things seem out of control and upside down. And that's what Positively Creative You, my other channel that I've been putting on the back burner endlessly, I think focus on things that make us feel better. Many are turning to crafting and art and there's so many benefits to that. But that's topic for Positively Creative You. So watch that space because I, I, I hope, hope, hope that I'm going to be putting out um, some videos very soon on how to deal with some of the turmoil that many people are having dealing with what's going on in the world. I'm also having work done on my house. <laughs> and so it's really hard to work when there's an army of people here, men throwing stuff around and, and in and out. And, you know, it's hard to to focus. It's hard to record <laughs> when there's other people here. So it's coming. I can't say when just now, but I, th I think it will help. Okay. So what I did was trace this piece of plastic around and cut this out. Right now though, I'm thinking I want it just a tiny bit smaller. I don't want it just exact because I want my material to adhere to this fab uh, to this paper so I'm just gonna trim a little tiny bit of this off with my handy dandy new big girl scissors I'm so tired of watching people cut with cuticle nippers why you know go ahead cut with cuticle nippers I don't care but don't make us watch it please don't make us watch it kind of like picking the backing off that stupid score tape oh my god if you want to spend your time and your life picking off score tape backing be my guest but edit it out don't make us watch we don't have time for that ain't nobody got time for that before i get too far ahead of myself i should get my spine cut that sounds horrible doesn't it get my spine gonna be tall enough oh it is it is gonna be tall enough that's beautiful so i'm gonna use there's already folds here in the spine. That's what I'm going to use as my spine. So I'm going to take this exact, it is exactly the right height. I'm going to make it the right width. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of measuring, so I don't do it a lot. I'm going to make two of these because I want it two thicknesses. Oh, hello. I'm marking the paper. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Pay attention. Pay attention mark the cardboard. Okay, so I'm going to take that out of the way. Get my super sharp box cutter out. By the way, this is a box cutter. It's not an exacto knife and it's not a craft knife. I wish people who are teaching other people what they're doing would know the difference. Exacto knife is a very different thing as is a craft knife. Very different thing. Even though I have this beautiful Fiskars self-healing mat, I like to cut on a Dollar Tree cutting mat because it saves my high dollar one. Easier to replace the Dollar Tree one than it is the Fiskar one. I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like the Krabby Crafter is out today. <laughs> she's, she's feeling kind of 
spunky today, holy smoke. So I'm gonna line my ruler up on the lines underneath on my craft mat. I'm gonna line my ruler up on that line so that I know I've got a, a straight, pretty straight spine and line it up with the mark that I made. Wow, 67 cuts, I think it's time for a new blade. Okay, we're done with that. Look at how much cutting I saved on this cheap thing versus this. This has a lot of cuts on it too. Okay, so let's make sure that they fit. I'm gonna have it too thick, meaning not overly thick, but two layers deep. You want just enough wiggle room in there, just a whisper between the line of the folded spine. And I refolded this uh, when it came out of the VHS plastic holder. It had a crease here, but I want to use I want to use it more like a book. So instead of using the ones that were naturally there, I folded it along the spine and gave it some love with my bone folder. So now there's actually four lines, <laughs> the original where it was folded for the VHS holder and the ones that I'm gonna use. So as long as my spine pieces fit here in between were golden and they do it's super super close which kind of makes me want to I have them so nice and straight and if I cut them with scissors they're not going to be nice and straight anymore but I just feel like I need to take a whisper off look big girl scissors full cuts you let the blades do the work if you're wondering what all this is about, I did a Size Matters video on my Krabby Crafter Clubhouse and I'm still referring to it because I still keep seeing it all the time. Okay, there I have plenty of room. That, that one of them was just a little too big. So I'm going to glue these together. I'm going to tape run them together and glue them together. Get my glue thing out again, or my cutting thing out again. I also like to glue on a cheap placemat because, or cutting mat, because trying to cut or work on a surface that's got a whole bunch of glue bumps on it is frustrating. And she's crabby enough. She doesn't need any help in that area by having things be more irritating. So anything that I can do to lessen the irritation factor in my craft room, I'm going to do it. So I'm using two glues here. Why? Because... Number one, if one doesn't work, the other one will. And number two, it gives me far more wiggle room. If I just put these two together with the tape runner, they're done. You can't maneuver them. Those, that's so sticky. And you're one go and you're done. <laughs> I need, I may need some, you know, some wiggle room. I would use Scotch Create here. I don't know if I have any. Here, oh, this is one of the ones that, this is one I I have a question mark on it. That either means I melted it and this is leftover stuff or it's the questionable stuff that wasn't really working. But I'm gonna I'm gonna use this. You can see there's a whole bunch of places where it missed. So I'm gonna use three glues. Why not? Just get them all in there. Don't want this falling apart. Okay, put the two together. And we're gonna let that dry while we do other things. And this is all covered in glue. I don't wanna put my beautiful paper down on it. So now I have a nice clean work surface to, to use. I can put this. This bag will reinforce this paper like nobody's business. Plus it might give it an added texture to it. I don't know. I'm gonna start in the spine. Again, I'm gonna use, here we go. There's no going back now. I have gone ahead and added adhesive to this thing so <laughs> it's on might as well use this it's close 
Bunny up, bunny down. I think bunny down. So I'm gonna fold this in half. Sorry, little bunny. I'm gonna put that halfway mark in the halfway mark of the spine. Remembering I left myself a little room all the way around. One of the reasons I do it this way is I get it as centered as I possibly can and I can work out. And if things are not quite right, I can, I can trim this if I need to or alter it in some way if I need to. But it looks like it's gonna fit. No one's gonna see that, but I don't want it sticking out. Now we get to play with our pretty, pretty fabric that I've had forever and had no, I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Today is the day. Saving this for my daily glue book slash smash book cosmic smash chunky junky thing that I got going on. Oh, look, a perfect square. That'll be handy for something. Now, if I put this over that black, will it be all right? I think it'll be all right. I wish I had some fray check for this edge because I'd like this to be nice and clean and neat, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Getting ahead of myself though, aren't I? I got to finish gluing this down. I probably don't. I mean, it would be all right, but I might as well. Another reason I'm using the tape runner is I'm not sure the glue will be enough to hold this shiny plastic down. Why didn't I use the glue on here too? Because it's already pretty well set where I want it to go. It's not going to go anywhere. I don't need maneuverability because I set it in the center. Like I said, I want to have a hidden spine. and I'm pretty sure I've done that before, but oh, it's been a while. So I'm going to have to figure it all out again as I go. And you know, that's all right. Keeps my mind occupied, which is part of the beauty of turning to creating to quiet the mental chaos. It gives you something to focus on versus ruminating. One thing that drives me bananas is when people pick at scabs, so to speak, go over it and 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 then wonder, again, like picking scabs, going over it and over and over it and wondering why the, it's not getting better, it's not healing. Even though it doesn't have an up and down, it, there's a way that it feels right and a way that it doesn't feel right. So, okay, I'm gonna put it over. Probably be better if I ironed the wrinkles out of it first, but kind of impatient. So I'm going all the way down to the bottom of the fabric. And I'm just leaving myself the tiniest little bit off that corner, and I'm just gonna trace where I need to cut with a regular old pencil because I don't have any cool sewing notions like markers that disappear, craft chalk, or excuse me, fabric chalk, tailor's chalk. I don't even know what it's called. I don't have any of those. I have a pencil. So that's what I'm using. I have some beautiful fabric scissors that make cutting fabric a breeze. Although these are brand new scissors from Amazon. They would probably do the job as well, but if you've got fabric scissors you may as well use them round off these corners okay now that i have that plastic in i want to again fold it and kind of train that plastic so that my spine is always working properly Okay, here we go again. You just gotta go, like Julia Child says. Just do it. By the way, the video is over on PCU about calming the mental chaos. They're going to be very, they're more like a podcast. You don't even have to watch. It'll just be me talking, but I will have some really cool 
I think it's really cool graphics, very relaxing. I hope you enjoy it. But if you're interested in something like that, go over there and subscribe because I will be there soon. You may have to wait for me because I got about, today I hope to make six, I think it's six videos just today here on my take at the lake. It doesn't leave a lot of time <laughs> to make the other ones, but it'll work out. Okay, so it's a little crooked already. I'm probably stretching the material out, trying to straighten it so much. How much is it over? Yeah, I have, I have some trimming to do, but that's okay. Trimming is doable. Do the same thing we did last time, because that seemed to work pretty well. I'm going to use my art glitter glue along this edge because art glitter glue is a really, really good glue and it lets me get right up to that edge. And that's important. I could probably put a border around it to also ensure that all these things come together and play nice together, but I want it to remain as much like a VHS as possible. And if I bling it all up with feathers and pom-poms and, pardon me, bullshit, it's not going to look like a VHS anymore. It's going to look like every other journal. So I'm not into blinging it out with all kinds of nonsense. I just want it to be a nice, clean, unique VHS cover journal. Take my fabric give it a nice little stretch work from the center out from the center out oh I love it already look at look at look at you know anything with paw prints and maybe that raw edge will be fine maybe it'll grow on me those little frayed spots flip it round do the same on the other side It must be getting to the end. It doesn't want to play nice anymore. Too bad. Keep going. I'll tell you when I'm done. And I, I put the art glitter glue really close to the edge, but not right to the edge because there is a squish factor that needs to be considered. You know, it's going to mush out a little bit and that may help the fraying. So it's all going to work out just beautifully. And yes, I go over the tape runner glue because that's the whole point of using the secondary glue is to have that manipulation time and extra adhesion. Oh yeah, there's a lot of glue going on there. Woohoo! From the center out, top to bottom, from the center out, left to right as well. I had a tiny little bit that wasn't covered here, and so I just stretched that fabric to make it work. Even though I traced it, and even though I have extra down here, that's why I have extra down here so it didn't quite cover up here. Oh well. The best laid plans, right? So I'm pulling these loose buggers. So there's some fraying, some raw edge, and some neat clean edge. Variety is the spice of life, right? All right, so let's trim this up. Oh, I'm cutting the paper. Another reason I don't want to bling up the, the border is I think it, it it's going to be cool to have this sitting on a shelf and someone's going to open it maybe thinking, huh, I haven't seen this video in a long time and the minute they open it are surprised. In fact, it's not a video. It is a journal. How cool is that? I don't know who is going to be looking at my shelves, but it's a nice story. There's a line in this movie, dark, 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 bark the colonel. My mom and I say that all the time, especially this time of year. You know, it's been 50, 50 plus years since we saw this movie together, and it's just always been a part of our dialogue. Dark, 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 barked the colonel. Of course, most people don't have any.
any idea what we're talking about. It's just one of those mom and me things. So even though I traced it and I did my best to cut it out, I still have extra here and there that needs to be trimmed. And that's all right. I'm going to do a shout out to Miss Canadian Jane if you're watching. I hope all is well. And I just want you to know that I'm thinking about you. And I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with. Okay, so again, while that glue and adhesive is still damp in there and pliable, I'm going to retrain my cover where my spine is. It's important to do that at every step so that it doesn't get stiff on you in the wrong place at the wrong time. You want it always just to work. There. Look how fun. All right. Super cool. Now, what do we do with this? So now I have to decide, do I want this to be a traveler style where I can take the signatures in and out or do I want these to be permanent? I'm thinking because my kits are specialized for this cover, I'm probably not going to be taking them in and out so I can go ahead and sew them in. But before I do that, I want to cover it. I'm going to use this fabric to cover that spine. Look, another perfect square. Buy a whole bunch of fat quarters, hinge these together, and you have a pretty cool little art art journal because it's nice heavy. You can paint on it and do all kinds of mixed media stuff on it. That would be fun. I got to figure out which is the right way. How does this feel right? I think it's this way. Now I'm going to have to deal, if I just cover it, there's going to be some cardboard there. I can paint this, just hit it with acrylic paint, or I could, I think what I'm gonna do is cover it with this white, a little little bit of this white. So I just took a piece about the width of my spine, and fold it in half, clean up the ends, cut it in half, and then just put this over the top like that. So that's what you see when you look down into the spine. I could do that with the black. Do I want to do that with the black? I've already got this cut. I've already made the decision. Let's move forward, shall we? Move my beautiful cover so nothing. Gotta protect it the best I can while we're doing this. Time to change. Of course it's time to change it. You know, because that's how it works. It lasts such a long time that every time I go to do this, I really don't remember how I did it. And by the way, I have this little elephant here because putting this cap on, it's not obvious. It fits on both ways, not really well. It's not obvious. And so I put washi tape here and washi tape here so that they match up. So I don't have to think about it and I don't have to argue with it. I know exactly where it goes. Okay, we are back in business. I got my, my little thing changed out. So easy. You flip it open, pull one out, put a new one in. Got to make sure that the, they don't come apart because they're not connected. If you're not careful, it falls apart and that's a nightmare. But if you're careful, it's super easy. So I'm going to put a little bit of everything on here. I want to make sure that when you look down on it, you see at least one paw. I don't want it to end up right in the middle where it's going to be white. So I am kind of being fussy about what lands right here on the top. And I, I was just looking, I totally forgot to put my extra piece of spine under that material. Oh well. I didn't, and it's too late now, so I'm not going to do anything about that. Not a big deal. Do the same on this other side. This is my prototype, by the way. I've not done a practice run with this. This is just, we're just doing it. Figuring it out as we go. It'll be fine. Oh, I love nice sharp scissors. Nice sharp big girl scissors. One time every pair of scissors in my room had purple handles and so I had to delineate. I know the dark purple ones are the titanium ones, the ones with the tape are my material ones, etc., etc. You know, it's the little things that keep you keep you sane and organized. <laughs> so that's better. Now we can do this part of it. I think no, well, I was gonna say, I think I'm done with my tape runner, but I'm not just yet. So I want my, my, I want this black fabric to overlap into the white 
just a little bit. I think it'll look nice, and I also think it'll offer the spine some more support, and that's important. I'm going to cut it just a little bit too long so I can trim it off later rather than trying to get it exactly right right now because I know I won't be able to do that. I'm not measuring. My scissor skills are not that grand. My measuring skills are worse. I like to tear it because usually it ends up with a much straighter, straighter edge than what I can cut. But I didn't cut this edge. It's they cut it. Whoever manufactured cut it. So put my spine in there, and we're gonna cover it up. And our signatures are gonna be sewn in there. I think rough roughing up this edge will be kind of cool making this inside part kind of rough on purpose i think that'll look nice try and grab some of those just pull just grab some of the the ones here on the end the strings i'm talking about just giving it a pull to rough up those edges rough up those edges 101 Dalmatians. We might as well have some dog humor in there, right? If you're wondering, I have not done anything else in my dog-shaped journal since, since Oakley's big reveal, Oakley and Wordsworth. I have not been back to him. Truth be told, I don't even know where he's at. He's in here somewhere. How sad is that? But that is the truth. I have plenty of papers. How many pages do I have here in my kit? I have 30 pages and this is not gonna fit. I don't think three full signatures. And unfortunately, I printed everything full size and I'm gonna have to trim every single one of those 30 pages or however many I end up putting in there. Here's what I'm thinking. Because I like my, like everything else, I like to have it all. I think I'm gonna put a sewn in signature toward the left of the spine, a sewn-in signature toward the right of the spine, and then a traveler-style band where I can slip things in and out if I want to, and that will give me three signatures if there's room. There's certainly room for two, but three signatures is questionable, so I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to do that. So, I, I'm trying to figure out do I poke my holes first and then put my fabric on and then just find the holes through the fabric? I think it would be easier to mark, measure and mark on the spine, poke the holes. May as well do that. So I'm just gonna take my pencil and a ruler, find the approximate center. It is not quite eight and a half. It's about eight and a quarter. So I'd be four and a little bit extra. So I'm just gonna eyeball that. Four and a little bit extra. One at the top, one at the bottom. And then go over to the other side and make one on the right side. This is way off. I've got, got to have them all line up. I'm switching to, to pen because I have so many pencil lines now. I don't know which is which. Right hand side of the, the ruler. And then put them in the same spot. So I measured it and then I'm marking it in a different place anyway. Oh, something wrong with the girl. Get my big crocodile out. Oh, my little journal. Cover, I should say. And I do I want the little the little hole, not the big hole. So make sure the little guy's coming out. And I'm just gonna line that up with the holes I just made or the marks I just made. And I love this because it goes right through the fabric and everything with ease. Okay, now we have to trim a whole bunch of paper because this is smaller than that folded. Actually, this works out. Does the eight and a half by 11 work out? Oh, fantastic, that's great news. I only have to trim a little bit of height off. So let's get out all the black ones and then I'll show you my kits. I'm very excited about the kits. 
put the fabric away because we're done with that at least for now and the glue gun or tape gun can go away for now our spine away for now and our glue away for now so as i said i've got black and white paper i guess they are everything's eight and a half by eleven and i need it to be less than that <laughs> i may have to measure so i want it to be I take a half inch off if I take a half inch off all the papers then that should be plenty that's awesome I thought it was gonna be way worse if I had room I'd get out my beautiful guillotine cutter but I do not have room so I'm gonna even I'm even gonna try this I've never you never done it this way but we're gonna give it a go so the idea is if I put it up here and I put this to the eight mark and then cut that off, that should be a half inch and that should get me to where I need to be. And it does, once we cut those corners, round off the corners, it'll be perfect. Outstanding. All right, let me do the black. What you're hearing outside are snowmobiles, the people across the street behind me or getting their sleds ready and running their snowmobiles in the front yard. Do we have snow? Not one single flake. Does that matter? Nope. Nope. Not at all. Black washi. I'm going to get out my gold paint and my gold and silver markers and my white gel pen and I'm going to make faux black washi tape out of that. Mm-hmm. Might as well do the plain white. You can do them all the same. That would be awesome. Do them all at the same time. Let's try and do four at a time. So before we get to trimming, let me show you the kit. This is the kit that will be available on my Patreon shop. And only on my Patreon shop. It is... I think there's ten pages here, but I... I yeah, it's a ten-page kit. It will only be available on my Patreon shop. An actual picture of Dalmatian fur. How fun is that? Just a fun page. Now again, these are the the idea in my brain is always to just fold them in half and have a page ready to go. Just some Dalmatian pattern. This kind of looks more like a cow, so take it or leave it. <laughs> but it's black and white, and it's kind of fun. My patterns didn't line up very well this time. I'm going to have to tweak these and re-save it. But that's all right. Yours will look better than mine. Uh, more sort of Dalmatian stripes. It's mostly ink spots, but that's all right. Again, Dalmatian themed, not necessarily physically accurate, but fun. Black and white spots. And another but different picture of Dalmatian fur. Some beautiful Dalmatian clip art. 101 if you want to do 101 Dalmatians. Spotted hearts. The word Dalmatians. I love that. With the, I love that alphabet, don't you know? Some clip art, you know, because they're known as the firehouse dogs. Just some beautiful images of Dalmatians. Dalmatian puppers. Sleeping Dalmatian. Some dog quotes. As long as they're all Dalmatians, there will always be magic in the world. Of course it could be dogs. As long as there are dogs, there will always be magic in the world. Dogs have a way of finding people who need them and filling an emptiness we didn't even know we had. A day spent with a dog is never a wasted day. Anyway, that is the 10-page kit available on my Patreon shop. If you are looking to do a 101 Dalmatian type journal. So I have to cut a half inch off all these and I'm gonna make sure that I'm cutting properly. I may cut off this one a quarter inch off top and a quarter inch off bottom just so that I don't lose a whole half of a print, paw print. Most of these don't matter. It's all good. These obviously have to be fussy cut out and or trimmed. And the other kit that I made, oh, another thing that I have, long, long, long time ago, I went on Etsy and I bought paw print papers in a hundred different colors. So I went to the DigiKit that I already purchased, that I've had forever, and printed the black and white and the white and black. 
but my printer is being goofy and so it didn't finish here and it sort of did that actually I did this because I had it portrait and I needed it landscape because these are all up right it seems like it wouldn't matter but these are upright if I did it this way they're all sideways and that would make me crazy so this is just going to be either stuff for this journal just backgrounds and index uh, journal cards and whatnot or not I just have to reprint the black one but this will be a page by itself uh, the other thing that I could do is put these back through the printer and print these on the back so that they'd be double-sided. I may do that. I don't know how ambitious I am. I would have to change my ink cartridge and that would take more time and who needs that? There's a piece of faux washi tape that I can, that I have right now, right now, right now. So I'm gonna cut that off and make, at least I'll have one bit of paw print washi tape. Can't lose that. That's our spine cover. This next kit that I made for this project, this is just for me. I am not selling it. Even though you can buy 101 Dalmatian, Disney's 101 Dalmatian on Etsy, I don't know how they're getting away with it because it's still under copyright. Walt Disney does not take kindly to other people selling their artwork. So I don't know how all those people on Etsy are getting away with it, but they sure are. So if you want a 101 Dalmatian kit, like, the movie you can go to Etsy and you can buy those but I'm not selling mine I I don't want to tangle with Etsy or with Disney and Etsy's funny they'll let the big sellers get away with it but a small seller like me they'd squash me like a cockroach so I'm not even gonna try plus it's not the right thing to do this stuff I have every right to sell I made that kit I can sell that kit this is Disney's property I can't do that, so I'm not gonna. But what I did, I have a beautiful, actually I just gave it away, but I had a beautiful Walt Disney World coffee table book of all their stories. And I took pictures of all of the pictures that were in that book from 101 Dalmatian and for the Sleeping Beauty one of Maleficent and Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. I took those just with my smartphone. I just took pictures of the pages of the images. Then I took them up to Canva and I removed the backgrounds for all of them. And so I just have this nice collection of 101 Dalmatian pictures. There he is. That I can use in this 101 Dalmatian journal. The dummies, they're so funny. Cruella. I always wanted Cruella's black and white hair and for a while I had it wasn't side to side like that it was back to front but it was very cool I would love one of those roadster type cars too one day mm -hmm. and then all the beastlies running through the snow isn't that beautiful and then sitting sitting at home safe with all their puppers and then just some miscellaneous pictures to use on the various pages now again this one is not for sale this one I made just for myself but the generic black and white dalmatian kit is where it's on my patreon and just for fun this was sitting on my desk for it was just sitting there and it, i think it has to go on a dalmatian journal don't you so i'm going to take some time and just cut all my pages down you don't have to watch me cut a half inch off 34 pieces of paper i'll be back okay i am back 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 I not only cut off the top half inch of each page, but I also took a corner chomper and rounded all of the corners. I don't know if I have a defective corner chomper or I am defective, but I always have to trim corners off. It never actually rounds them all. And I always think when I'm using it, oh, I don't have enough paper in it. Well, this time I jammed as many as I could jam in there and it did work better. It does work better the more pages that you feed it however there was still a lot of trimming left to do so i like we are memory keepers i love the big bite crocodile chomper big bite thing for the holes that's brilliant and for setting eyelets it's wonderful and i have a scoreboard from them a score slash cutting board that i really really like from them and their envelope punch is fantastic but their corner chomper needs some work so what i did was 
I took away two of the black pages and two and all of the plain white pages. I have enough papers here. I don't need plain white paper. And as I was doing this, I, my initial thought was I was going to put these on the backs of these. You know, I was going to not have all of my pages were going to be printed double sided. But I did not do that. I printed everything separately. One should have gone on the back of the other. And so now I have way more papers than I anticipated. So this is my, we'll call it a bootleg, the pictures I took from the book. This is the Disney version. This is the kit that I made. I have the black and white paw prints. I'm thinking these are going to be signature covers. I like my signature covers to be a little bit hardier than regular. So what I think I'm going to do, and I, I just decided this right this minute, is I'm going to glue one of the Dalmatian print pad, uh, fur patterns on the back of one and the other on the back of the other. And that will give these a little bit more body, so to speak, and it'll be two less papers I have to find a home for. Plus the signature covers will then be different than the signature pages on the inside. I also obviously folded them all. I one by one folded them in half, creased it, and then took my bone folder to each one to get a nice crisp. I'll show you what I did. I folded it in half this way because I'm going to have to refold these. Fold it really good and then with my handy dandy bone folder give it some love. I've seen people just, this is not a magic wand, it's a tool and it's to press. It's to give pressure like an iron without the heat to that crease. It's, you can't just wave it over a paper and hope it works. Otherwise you're missing the point. Anyway, crease that really good. So then now I can print, I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna have to glue those together. And they're off a little bit. I'm gonna just ink around them maybe with some jet black and then it won't matter so that I can glue those together. Now, earlier I showed you that this was a misprint here. My printer spit it out too early. Instead of reprinting and using this just as scrap or, you know, it wouldn't go to waste. Instead of reprinting it, I decided to use it and then just put one of my sparkly ribbons down the side. Or when I was trimming these papers, I have, I have faux washi tape. I could just glue something like that there, or I could line this up and make this work somehow. Maybe not, probably isn't cut off right, so I probably wouldn't use that. Uh, I also have, I have all kinds of options with these off cuts that I can use as faux washi. So I have options for this. I'll just figure that out when I'm doing the decorating. So I'll put my faux washi tape over with my other embellishment. Another misprint, this, this was another one where, this was the one where the, I stopped it from printing. Instead of not using this one too, I gave this a wavy, just kind of a fun edge, folded that up, folded it in half, and this is gonna be a page in one of the signatures. And so now what I'm gonna do is glue my signature covers together. And if I wanted it to be even a little bit more hardy, I could put a piece of manila folder in between and make you know, make a serious signature, but this is kind of a lightweight, it's gonna be a soft-sided journal, so it doesn't have to be substantial. So I'm not gonna do that, but that's an option for future signature cover making. So I'm gonna glue those together. I also kept one black sheet for each signature. So what I'm gonna do is separate my piles. I only have one of these. I should I should have made another one with something else. Maybe one of these. I like them to be even. If I'm going to have this little shorty guy in one, I want one in the other. So I'll just have to make one. I'll figure it out later. But for right now, I'm just going to separate these papers into signatures. And I, I folded them randomly. So some of the images are on the inside of the fold. And some of them are on the outside of the fold. Just to make things a little bit different. Although now that I'm doing this, it looks like I did that. I did them all inside except one. Oh no, there's another. So that's an outside and that's an outside. Another way that I could, if I wanted to organize this is 
as the story goes. These are at the beginning where they're making their escape. That's three quarters of the way through. When they're getting to where they need to be, that's about halfway through. So those can go in the center of the journal. So I could do it in chronological order. This one I want as a center fold. I want that to be the center of one of the signatures because, because this one goes at the end because they're happily at home again. This one can go either way. The dummies are just standing there by themselves and her rushing after. So I think we'll do that sort of chronologically toward the end, but they're in the wrong spot to go at the actual end. So they're not going to be in chronological order. This is where they come home. So that could be the last one. And this is where they find that their puppies are missing. So this will have to go in the beginning. So I just reordered them all. Oh, the stuff you make yourself crazy with. So there. There's that. And then just divvy these out. So I'm going to have this one be my center. And this one be my center. And then, I, then I'll feel better about that. So now we're going to put these people. This is toward the middle of the book. Let's see if we're even close to even. Eight, nine. 10 with the black and nine. We can have black pages are a little bit too small and that's all right. I don't care. I haven't glued these together yet. You're not losing your marbles. I'm just, I'm just playing because I want to see what it's all going to look like. So there's my two signatures. Here's my beautiful journal. And I made them exactly the same size. And now that they're folded, Look how much they stick out. That will drive me bonkers. And so now I get to go in and trim a good solid quarter inch off all of my edges and re-round all of the corners. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. But that's my choice because I want it to, to be neat. I don't want them sticking out like that but it's just the right number of pages that's going to be just nice i need to even cut more off because i am not this is a good eighth of an inch thick too so once i put that there and this here and then these here i'm gonna have to cut off a half inch or better i knew cutting one trim would just was too good to be true i knew it farkin hoogan or whatever that was. Farfig Nugan? <laughs> but that's life in the craft room, right? Especially if you go in without a plan, Stan. So look at all the faux washi tape I'm going to have. Which was, which is very serendipitous. Because I was just kvetching the other day that I don't have any pet washi tape. I don't have any paw print washi tape. Well, now I've got faux paw print washi tape coming out my ears. I'll be back. Oh, it occurred to me that you might want to see this process. How am I going to, pardon me, unfuck this. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to get them really organized. Get them way down in there. They don't move on me. At least I think I can use these clips. They may be too bulky. We'll soon see, won't we? I put them in my book and I marked approximately what, what needs to come off. And so I'm just going to take, again, a handy dandy box cutter. I should change the blade, but I'm being lazy, so it's going to take me longer. Anyway, I'm just lining this up so that it looks fairly straight. And I'm just going to go to cutting. Layer after layer after layer. Oh, I cut off the dude's arms. Look at there. He's armless and I lost a puppy. What else did I jack up by not looking? I just cut. and cut off the maid's butt and half a head and a hand. What else did I lose? Oh, well. Oh, well. Corner chomper back out. I did them half inch. Uh, there's half, half inch and quarter inch size. And I... 
somewhere on here it says which is which but it was really hard to read so I just took a Posca pen and wrote which is which in giant white letters so I could read it welcome to your 50s there's nothing wrong with my eyes I don't need reading glasses I've never needed reading glasses it's not my eyes it's crappy design and apparently that's too many so now they got a nice jagged uh, I just have a butt now I'm gonna have to cover that with something cuz that'll piss me off oh well that's what happens when you don't have a plan if I'd have planned it better and done it properly well then I would have printed it printed the pages the right size to begin with scaled them down considerably I like to just go, and sometimes I pay the price for that. <laughs> That's all right. Better than sitting and waiting to go forever. It always leaves a corner. Always, always leaves a corner. And what is the point of having a corner rounder if you have to trim off the corners all the time? Coming right up, a Krabby Crafter Clubhouse video, a grumpy glue book session. I probably should have done that first. Oh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, didn't. Because I'm anxious, I'm going to put the spine in and put that up to the spine in the middle and close it. Ah, much better. Now I can sleep at night. All right, just because I'm nosy, what will I cut off? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm going to cut this off. And then refold it because I don't want to lose dark, dark, dark. I don't want to lose that. I'm not leaving anything here except the jack up. That should be gone. That's good. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Might lose part of that one, but that's all right. Oh, my paws. All right, I don't want to jack those up. So here we go again. this one I may have to do it twice and that's all right I'd rather do that than wreck them all so now if I fold this in half gonna be the right size another little bit so I'm glad I did it this way you know, things just don't always go perfect in the craft room all the time. You know, that's like much bigger, much bigger things to, to fret about and get pissy about than uh, stuff not going right in the craft room. Okay. Chomp these corners. Once in a while, it works just like it's supposed to. So then, of course, I worry that it's me. <laughs> All right, so how does this go? I'm getting them all schmutzy. We're back. It's almost there, almost there. So while I was away, I glued the two signature covers together, front and back, and distress oxided one of them because of the way that it was cut. It didn't quite measure up. And the inside one, the printer always leaves a whisper of a gray area all the way around and that drives me bananas. So I took black soot and grunged it all up to hide those spots. When I was sewing in the signatures, it occurred to me I put the wrong side out. But it works out beautifully because the front signature worked out. It was trimmed just right so I didn't have anything to hide. And so that one is pristine. And then this back one is after they have to go through the soot. You know, there's that scene. I hope it's here in the front side. I hope. It's probably not. It's probably in the back. That's all right. It doesn't matter. In the story, when they're trying to escape Cruella, they end up rolling in ash and soot to look like black labs instead of dalmatians because she wants a dalmatian coat you know not a lab coat so they roll in ash and soot and they're black puppies here's another picture of them when they're home but they're still 
covered in soot. So it works out beautifully here in the front. It's nice, clean, soot-free, but then they have to, you know, go through hell and back in order to get home. So this worked out really well. I have plenty of room here to tie, and I'm going to do that before I put it in. I'm going to tie in a string here so that I can put a traveler's notebook style signature in here if I want to. That's why there's so much room here in the signature or on the spine. So let's do that before I forget because I already did put my stuff away here. I'm just going to go with the same binders twine. Will this piece fit? What are the odds? I did not record me sewing in my signature because number one, it's been a really long time since I've done it. I switched to using the tie-in method versus the three-hole pamphlet stitch method. And today's little exercise and frustration reinforced that decision and they brought back all the memories of why I went to tying them instead of sewing them because ugh, I don't like sewing them. It looks so much nicer and it's, you know, a lot more permanent and blah, blah, blah. But this is supposed to be fun and that is not fun for me. So there I have a, I have a little signature holder in there. I'm going to spin that around so it's just that. I have my cover. I want to make sure that my cover is upside right and it's facing the right way and that my signatures are upside right and facing the right way. Again, I'm completely out of Fabri-Tac glue, so I'm just going to re rely on my tape runner and my art glitter glue. Or maybe I had to fix my wall because some people were working in my house and did some damage, so I had to fix the plaster. My Aline's glue was in the other room. So I'm going to use Aline's Tacky, probably a little bit of this just for good measure, and my tape runner, and that should... One of those should stick. So I'm going to put the tape runner down the center of the spine. I'm going to put some on here too. Or not. Just, you know, got to give it some love. And then it'll work out better than expected. I sewed my spine to my signatures. Now I'm going to place everything in there. Make sure it's not kitty wampus. Make sure my everything's where it's supposed to be. I'm going to lay that nice and flat. and put a book on it and let that dry overnight so that it's good and dry. Good and ad adhered. Get my nice heavy books out. Look at my mood ring, Harmony. I love these mood rings. I wear them all the time. I love, love, love them. When I put them on, they're black, and I love that. I wish they'd stay black. But earlier today, during the first part of the video, I was going to point out that the ring was exactly the same color as the polish. But now it's a bluish, it's blue on the outside and green on the center. I don't know if that's coming through. There you can see blue and green. Very cool. I get so many comments on them. Even people who don't like mood rings like my mood rings, as they should because they're so cool. Thank you, Harmony. I love them. Harmony at Harmony's Creations. Go check her out. Oh my God, she's a journal-making crazy person right now. She is just cranking out. Just fantastic journal. She started in Halloween and has not stopped for a minute. She's making nature journals. And today I watched a video of a mystery journal, mystery diary. It is just grunge delicious, fabulous she had an edgar box that was just magnificent at, at halloween this mysterious book mysterious diary has its own box with a history so cool go check her out we'll come back to this and i will show you what it looks like once it's dry and then i'll tell you what's next 
So it's the next day. I let it dry completely and it is firmly secure in my my spine and the the making is complete. It still needs to be decorated. That's a video for another day. I'll do a quick flip through for you to show you how well it turned out. I just love it. I think it's super fun. I have some dog charms. I'm going to add to these. They probably won't hang quite as low. They'll probably hang right about there, but I do have some silver. I think they're dog bones and, and blinged up paw prints. I'm not even sure anymore. It's been so long since I've seen them. Again, soft-sided journal. It's still nice and soft, but that spine is good and sturdy. And when you look into it from the top or the bottom, you see that beautiful paw print material. You can't really tell what it is, but it doesn't look like naked cardboard either. And that was the goal. Open it up. Oh, I have one more step. I have to glue this down, but what I think I'm gonna do is just glue the top and the bottom to make just a little tuck here. I suppose if I wanted to, I could take it to my sewing machine because it's just a thin, thin piece of paper. That plastic, but the plastic didn't go all the way to the top. Even so, it's thin enough my machine could probably, any machine could probably go through it. So that might be an option if I could get this in there and just do a zigzag stitch. I may do that on the next one. It'd be way easier to sew when it's not a book. But I, I think I could get in there and do some, some stitching if I wanted to. But either way, I'm going to just attach the tops of this flap. This is what covers up the spine. That's what the spine looks like. My original plan was just to glue that down, but I like the idea of having just a little pocket to tuck something in. I kind of had a change of plans just because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I was going to have the paw prints be the signature cover. I actually like how this worked out better. Funny how that happens. Because it would have been paw print, paw print, paw print. You know, that might be a little much. But now it's paw print, paw print, Dalmatian fur. I like that. And then the inside of the signature cover is the paw print. My blank black. And then just some images either that I created or that I took from a book. A little pocket tuck. I will probably glue glue these down so that they're actual pockets, not just a tuck. And then it, then we go right back. I'm so happy I, I thought ahead enough to, to save that and not have to reprint it. I would have reprinted if necessary. Anyway, I'll show you this black and white stripe thing in here in a minute. Here's the second signature. Let's see. There's the black, again, going with the soot second half of the story idea. The plain black page. And then the second half of the story's images. I love how that turned out. They're all happy at home and safe where they should be, the back of the signature. I will do the same thing here. I'm going to have to iron this little piece. I'll probably do it with my curling iron, just get my curling iron really hot, or my flat iron that I would use on my hair, and just flatten that out easy peasy, because I don't have a teeny little iron for my craft desk. I have hair stuff. So that's what I'm going to do here. So in the middle, if you remember, I left a traveler's style notebook string here in the center that means i can put whatever i want in here whether it be another signature full of papers right now i've decided i just grabbed a black and white scrapbook page i cut it down to size it was a 12 by 12 scrapbook page but an eight and a half by 11 would have worked as well the pocket just wouldn't have been as tall and I cut apart my the two kits that I made, and I'm just storing them in here. One kit I made for myself, one kit is available on the Patreon shop, only on the Patreon shop. I'll put that link either in the description below this video or in a pinned comment. Here are some more pieces to that kit. I just rough cut them so that they would fit in the pockets. I took these out because I thought they would be fun to add and I just cut a piece of them off the, the bigger sticker and tuck that in there. I made myself a note and I want to get a dog collar to use as a closure. I'll just probably get that at the Dollar Tree. And 
uh, the dog paws charm. I want to remember that I have the sparkly ribbons. I put them away. Oh, I have dog bone ribbons too that I want to use. Add that too. And I'd like to find a small PDF version of the story, print it to size, and put that in my traveler's notebook style in place for the traveler's notebook insert. So I'm thrilled with how it turned out. I, I love that it's one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite stories. I used the black and white binders twine A because I knew where it was and B because it's black and white and I love the binders, not binders twine, baker's twine. I can't wait to add the charms to it once I find them and have this sitting on my shelf with my journals. I'm looking forward to decorating it. I'm going to put all these little bits and pieces that I have cut out. Those are going to go all over the pages. I may keep this as a journal the clip art that I have there's probably something for every page but it'll just be like a little Dalmatian heart plus this so what I might write in here about is my memories of the movie my memories of the book my memories of mom and me going to the movies and how we've used that dark 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 mark the colonel ever since I was a tiny little kid write about still having the books write about my experience my memories of all about 101 dalmatians because what else would i put in here i have two others that i plan to do but this would work with any 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 favorite movie you know it could be a horror movie it could be your favorite horror flick so next time you go to the thrift stores look for old vhs there's millions of them available on ebay you can get them for a song pick up vhs version of your favorite movie and make a journal because it's just so fun thanks for playing along this was another long one but i think oh so worth it happy crafting go love up your beastlies whether you have one or a hundred and one give them all your best because that's what they give to us every minute of every day Mate at the lake. Out for now.